This episode of Super GG Radio is brought to you by our Patreon. Patrons of the show can get our Dogs of Super GG Radio newsletter, Super GG Radio stickers, a slap on your closest PC or bag, input on what we cover, game nights with the hosts, and even a chance to win a copy of an indie we talked about. Not only that, but 90% of all patron contributions go to the Children's Miracle Network of Hospitals. Visit patreon.com slash superggradio to learn more. What's good, Internet, and welcome to session 197 of Super GG Radio, where friends chat about video games and all things adjacent. I'm your football head-shaped host, Eric Getty Gettinger. Sorry, Eric K. Getty Gettinger. With me, as always, is cat dog expert Alex Arona. Uh, you picked the worst one for me. Like, I don't... Like, cat dog was my way Read out. Read the line. Cat dog is my way out. You know, a lot of people were freaked out that cat dog had one torso begging the question, where is waste excreted? Thank you. No, I don't think anyone was wondering that. Out the dog. Mm. Fine. <laughs> and I think we can move on from it. Let me also bring into the fold our veteran Joel Ah Real Gamer. Do it. I want to be Crumb. Cr- Crumb is like the most disgusting out of all the monsters because he is the closest thing to something resembling a real thing. Like, just this roly-poly, human flesh-looking thing with... With armpit hair. With armpit hair. Yeah. It's bad. And he holds his eyeballs. See, just I liked like Ip- us. I liked Ipkiss. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> you know, Joel, no one was stopping you from being crumb. And thank you for, for embracing it. All right, last one and possible super genius with his own laboratory, Alec Parks. Hell yeah, let's blow some shit up. See, now that's the spirit. Say this week, say <laughs> omelette du fromage. Omelette du fromage. He said he's French in high school. Question: What is that a reference to? Is that supposed to be? No, don't tell him. No, because right. that, if it, that doesn't make sense, because that's a that's a Cartoon Network thing, and. You went all Nickelodeon this. That that you They're they're probably owned by the same people at this point anyway. Incongruency. You want In- you wanna do this? <laughs> nobody's nobody's In- stopping you, Alex. Incongruency. Nobody's stopping you. You gotta make him sit a through it. Rat. No, I wasn't gonna do that to him. This week we fall prey to the Steam Next Fest once again. Talk about Starfield in the news. Ha! It is in the news. Someone wrote it in there. I did for you. Also, he could have been Quail Man! No. Okay. There's nothing funny about that reference. And then we try and figure out if we have anything for the backlog, but probably not because we have 18 games in Early Adopters. So let's just do that. Early Adopters, where we play alphas, betas, and games, games, and more games. Well, we did the count here, and we've got at least, uh, what, nine? Three, uh, four, Seems five, like nine six, games. seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten. Ten games. What a zest for the Steam Next Fest. Boo. Yeah, how long and, did you have that load yeah. in the chamber? Uh, Days. About two and a half minutes. Days he had it. It's <laughs> all he's been it, thinking about. Get it, give it a rest. No. I'm <laughs> going to put this to the test. All right. You ever listen to that band, Mest? <clears throat> Whenever you're ready. Lest we forget. So I'm going to start with the game that everybody played. I did. Most of us have played, except for one person who said he couldn't be bothered to do the homework this week. Yeah, I said no. Yep. We're going to start with Dungeons of Ether. Aether. Aether. Ether. Aether. The A is silent. <laughs> uh, yeah. So this uh, this game is in the. Aetherverse? Aetherverse? Yeah, the a- the Aetherverse, yeah. Aetherverse? There and if you don't know games? what that means, yeah, there, there's there's more games. There's, there's th- th- uh, This is the third one. There's Rivals of Aether. There's Lovers of Aether, which is a, uh, a April Fool's Day, but end up being a real game game, dating sim where you date the Rivals of Aether. And then there was the mobile game that Alex made me play. Oh, yeah, you're right. There's a 
there's a Cards of Aether or something like that, and then this is the Dungeons of Aether. Also, this year will be Rivals of Aether Two, which is a there's Smash Brother kind of clone. Well, the original is a wait. Yeah, yeah, the original is the Smash Brother clone. Yeah, but this one is more of a dungeon crawl, hence the name Dungeons. And you, so far in this demo, play as Foxy Fox. Fo- Foxarella. What did what did we name her? What did the game Fleet. name her? Fleet. And she's got a bow, and she's going around bowing things. So there's a lot of interesting mechanics in Dungeons of Aether. Uh, the dice system. I want to talk about the dice system. So you have primary stats. You've got an attack, a block, a speed, and a skill. And each turn, the game will roll a set of dice, and then you and your opponent go back and forth selecting dice to add to your stats. Uh, The exception being gold dice, which can be slotted in any one of the positions, and ones, which can only be slotted in the color that corresponds to the skill. This was kind of neat and kind of frustrating at times. (laughs) because you get only so many opportunities to try and snag the ones you want and you have to be very strategic about it are you trying to focus on doing damage do you want to pump up your skill for a turn to try and do a a special ability or yeah just go all in on defense to avoid taking any damage well and it's worth noting too that it is a pool of dice that you are going back and forth choosing with the enemy and so the strategy not just goes into like which dice do I choose to place in what slot. There's also a bit of a defensive maneuvering where if you see they could be going towards something that would negate your attack, you might swipe that to undercut them. Um, the the combat system is very interesting. It reminds me a little bit of dicey dungeons. Maybe it's just the dice. Yeah. It's it's yeah. not it's not quite as robust as, as that, but it, it is a nice bit of RNG to it. One thing I do appreciate as well. Based on your dice selections, your moves will tell you whether or not it'll impact them at all. So, say your attack is 5, but their defense is 7. You're not going to hit get a hit on them for that, because their defense is over your attack power. And when you're actually going through the menu options, there'll be an asterisk or something saying, this will have no effect. So, for somebody like me, who's one of the least favorite things about Final Fantasy games was using a magic and realizing it had no status effect i appreciate that Mm -hmm. i really like that you weren't uh tied into your dice selection until you made your attack you could after you've drafted your pool you could sort them around to as you said go make that hit or make Mm -hmm. that dodge Mm, you have to take into account that the colors of the dice if you move them into another skill like Alec was describing, then it only equates to one Plus extra one. point. Right, right. So if you have a six defense, you can put it in your defense stat, get the plus six, or you can move it up to attack and get an additional plus one. And then you open the gate for the food buff, the extra energy that you can cram into your character however you see fit. Yeah, the stamina. Yeah, your stamina boost, which you can get from certain items, and then it'll allow you to take from your stamina pool and boost any of the statistics that you have to try and, you know, overcome the disadvantage that your opponent has imposed on you. Or Is this the what dice it was themselves? like when you guys tried to when I tried to explain to you like a bat like like uh what was it called the 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 battlers? See, I could have taken a really like <clears throat> soft approach to this, but I know that you didn't play it, and if you played like 2 minutes of this, you'd be like, "Oh, this makes perfect sense." Yeah, yep. this is just like when I tried to explain auto battlers. Nothing it's, is it's ever how you try to explain auto battlers. Yeah, this you had a feels six that way. six page uh, essay on how to play, which I never read. Thank goodness. <laughs> uh, but you know the dungeon element. You're going from room to room, and you can pick up certain things, uh, either treasure chests. You get the opportunity to unlock those with dice rolls. You. Uh, that's a fun little mini game uh, battles there's a healer that's located in the dungeon in this demo as well in case you take too many hits you could run over there and try and uh, regain a little bit of health and 
obviously the boss fight, which was fun, if not a little bit challenging. I do appreciate that they have definitely retained that visual style of the the rivals of Aether characters, and and but they're nice and crisp, uh, comparably mm-hmm. that that rivals of Aether was really doing for that almost like pixel art digitized kind of look, and this is nice and crisp and clean, and it it suits that RPG style game well. Yeah. Alec, you have anything else you want to add to the fire here? Uh, no, I just uh, I did love the dialogue, though. That's something <laughs> that kind of got left out. It yeah. was quirky and humorous. Yeah, it was, and it was, you know, it was it was lighthearted and, and not taking itself too seriously, and and that's nice. Does it make you want to go back and play more Rivals? A little bit. Nope. I always want to <laughs> play more Rivals. You heard it here, folks. Alex wants to go play something else. <clears throat> no. Rivals? All right. Hey, me and Joel had like a real like weekend love affair of Rivals of Aether where we played it for like a weekend. Yeah. One whole weekend? Did you guys got get the ice appeal. cream sandwiches too? He got the appeal. <clears throat> Did you have a love affair with that ice cream sandwich too? Oh, I do. You want to you wanna go get one right now? <laughs> We can move on from real gross into the mic. Yeah, move on from early adopters and get you some ice cream, buddy. Is that what you want? We got we got a bunch more games, Getty. I know we have way too many games on here. Well, so here's where the paths diverge a little bit. Just let me know if you want a quick one. We have one that I did a deep dive on, one that Alec also did a deep dive on, and then we have like eight that everybody (laughs) else. Sorry, at this point, six that everybody else touched. Um, let's see. Let's go with three of the ones off of this other list, and then I'll jump in, or Alec will jump in. Yeah, so let's, uh, who wants to talk about Blue Wednesday? I will. I like this game. This is, um, it's, there's a, I don't know how to put this as a genre, but there's a games like Night in the Woods, where <clears throat> it's kind of like a... Side scrolling, a little bit of light platforming, where you're just this 2D kind of cartoon character roaming around this very bustling and alive world, getting into like trouble, like with dialogue conversations, or just kind of trying to find new people to talk to. And when you talk to new people, they kind of give you little bits and pieces to the story, to the world, the environment, backstory, character backstory. But again, it's got platforming and 2D just kind of side scrolling. It's more about you interacting with the world through these conversations. So there's not really like a super tight goal. There's no scoring system. It's just telling a really kind of tight story. Occasionally you'll get a mini game that's just there for emphasis. Blue Wednesday is one of these where you are a character who kind of is in the middle of life, kind of ram, like kind of like very aimless. And his one thing is that he wants to be a piano player. He's very good but he never really made it anywhere. So now he works at a grocery store and very badly, I might add. So you kind of wake up, play a little bit of piano, playing mini game, but then you go right into like, you know, I want to explore his like bedroom and it's like really messy. And he's kind of like, is really down on himself, but then he goes and walks around town and meets like cool hip hop kid and, you know, meets like friend who was like talking about this cool jazz nightclub. And you just kind of explore the world and you get these little pieces of flavor these little conversations he'll 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 finish up his job and then you'll just hear the city and you'll hear the sounds of the city and it kind of morphs into like a full jazz concert and they give you like little mini games where you're just like clicking on the instruments in the sky and it just kind of puts a little bit more puts you in more of the mindset of what the character's brain is kind of doing at any given time so it's more about the emotional nuance the the world the characterization in these stories but like it's just I all told through a char- like an aimless character who just really loves jazz. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of, night in the woods was very similar. Uh, minus the jazz. So I think this wasn't... game, I think this game does what the artful escape was trying to do, which was use video games as a medium primarily for storytelling 
using the integration of its style into how the world becomes vibrant and colorful and dynamic. The difference here is that Blue Wednesday does a lot better job of integrating different type of mini game scenarios in it, whereas the Artful uh, Escape was really just about walking back and forth. So, for example, when you're playing an instrument, what will actually happen is it'll give you the the lines like uh, Guitar Hero would be with the different notes coming down that you have to then press in time with the actual beat of the music. And so it'll actually become fairly varied and, and challenging in certain spots where you're having to really go almost off beat on your keystrokes because, well, you're playing jazz, right? So it's it's that. And, and then there's things like the mini games in his job at the grocery store. So it's like sorting drinks and uh, ringing up items. And you can actually ring up a, was it an animal on accident, something like that. A monkey actual, with symbols? Yeah, yeah. So... It, not it, a uh, toy like an actual monkey um i don't, I don't know now i don't now i don't remember um but the the character is also this very melancholy kind of character looking out and seeing things in kind of a depressing and, and down on his luck kind of way and it's a good contrast to sort of this big booming city environment as well i i, I am interested in this game i, I think even in this small slice of a demo, they've presented a lot of interesting ideas, and they gave you just the right bit of uh, a nibble of like what the game is and story is going to be like. So it it was pretty compelling. And uh, okay. while you're waiting for this one, Joel may I suggest Night in the Woods. Sorry, go ahead, Elk. <laughs> I didn't have anything. Oh, sorry, I thought oh. it was you that said something. Oh, my bad. Yep, that's where I, I I really like this one. I think people should check this one out. Okay, Blue Wednesday, little jazz, little light hopping around. Still, is this one still available, or is this one uh, coming soon? Then still available. As still a demo. available. Check out the demo. Did you check it out? No. Okay. Well, then check this one out. Dad by the Sword. Also, demo still available if I can trust the notes in here. Yes. Who is yes. Who is Dad by the Sword? Uh, this is my doing. So, Dad by the Sword. I'm, I'm gonna throw out that uh, nomenclature boomer shooter. If we're gonna start using that. No, <laughs> so, we're not using boomer that. shooter. <laughs> that that's sort a of doom like very, very a doom -like? basic doom ish kind of controls. It, it looks a lot better. It's, it's cell shaded. It's very colorful. It is just a dungeon room by room shooting the enemies, maybe some light puzzle solving, and then moving on to the next room. The, the main hooks of this is number one, very cheesy dad humor in some spots. So, for example, when you, there's a kick button, and when you do the kick, his foot comes up, but it is a sock with the big toe space torn open. Typical dad move. I don't, I don't know about you guys, but I, I did scold it for how long I handed on to socks here. Um, I actually became somebody that as soon as any kind of hole or deterioration's there, I just threw them away. Really? But, but then what do you wear on Sundays to church? Those are your holy socks. No. Nope. Take that, Alex. <laughs> Why is it always... Anyway, I like that the character <laughs> also, like, some of the, the monuments in the game are, like, just grills. Like, you can get right, a grill right. with, so like, in, hot dogs on there. Yeah, in between the different levels, there's a grill that you don't walk by, and it's just ribs. Just ribs sitting there. Uh, you can pick up a can of Barbasol and use it as a projectile weapon. So that was you have to good. shave. You have to shave, like, a huge monument. Yeah. Like his mustache. Yep, yep. So it's, it's all very silly on its face. The, the main hook of the actual gameplay, though, is that it is not quite such a typical first-person action game. Uh, you actually have a sword, uh, not actually a gun. And the way it works is that you don't just do errant random swings. You will use the directional input to sort of angle how you're going to swing when you hit the, the hit button. So there is actually a little bit of finesse you have to do between actually swinging the weapon and then using it to block or parry. One other thing I found while uh, recording this with Brock from Damage Boost was that uh, you can actually break the weapon. 
<laughs> so, so if you're swinging around too wildly and just hitting stuff with it, eventually it'll crack and break off, and you'll just have a, a hilt with a tiny little uh, fraction of a, a sword piece. So I found that out. Yeah, I found that out. <laughs> it, it grows back after a little bit, but you are definitely like vulnerable with no attack or defense. Mm-hmm. It mm-hmm. grows back. Yep. I mean, magic. they have pills for that. Dad magic. I don't, I don't know. think they have pills to make swords grow back, Alec. Do you do you get to pick up Rogaine as you go around? <clears throat> I haven't gotten that far yet, although I would not be surprised if there was some analogous item <laughs> to mm. Rogaine. It, it's, I mean, th- honestly, that that's probably the main thing that I'd be curious about to see playing this game is just seeing how far they take the, the running joke about it because the environment itself doesn't evoke that sort of dad jokiness it's all very dungeony with spikes and and statues and stuff and the monsters are they randomize from like actual creature monsters things to walking hot dogs Um, yep so lots of different weird stuff there so it feels like a weird mishmash in that way but i i'm curious to see what happens with this one uh definitely gonna keep my eye on it not sure if it's a day one buy though i definitely wanted a little bit more of that dad humor for sure mm-hmm. Hmm. okay is there more of that dad humor alex just didn't make it to that point i i think i sort of captured what mostly what they had on the demo okay so, yeah. so again so. i think the main question is how far do they stretch that out through the game uh can they keep it fresh throughout the entire what? experience what are you looking for, Alex? Do you want just bad dad jokes? I actually thought corner? about this, and I want like an enemy to come out and say, I'm angry, and then you like kill it, and your character goes, Hi, angry, I'm dad. Hey, Alex, what's a foot long and slippery? What's that? A slipper. <laughs> That's pretty good. Mm. Getty's very unhappy. Mm. Yep, yeah, I'm making noises here. All right, well, let's see. I feel like we probably got one more in us before we could take a a quick news break. News break. Well, we could, we could, I don't know, how long you want to take this one for? Let's go for one more. One more felt good. One more felt good? All right. Then let's, uh, oh boy, there's so many to choose from. Yeah. Uh, eeny, meeny, miny void train yeah that one's mine (laughs) okay i I just want to say that the marketing for this is very confusing it's it's the the marketing has a lot more action where you're flying through the air with machine guns killing crazy creatures and i gotta tell you this game is it is very much like a Oh, you collect metal, and then you refine. You put metal in a machine, and out pops out nuts and bolts. You do that enough times, and then you collect wood, and you put the nuts and bolts and wood together, and all of a sudden you build a lab. You know what I mean? You put like a table down. It's very Minecrafty. You put the table down to make stuff. You got to do a science lab to make chemicals. You put the and you have to keep doing that to keep making more and more stuff. The yeah, uh, what was that? Getty, what was the game that we all played? Uh, the shrinking one. The one in the backyard. The Right. Grounded. Grounded? Grounded. Yes, it's very grounded. grounded. Now, what makes this unique is that you are you have gone to another dimension where you're just on a train car. One of those like you you know, you pump it to move it to move the train car. And you also has its own engine as well. The pumping action makes it go faster. And you are in the void which is just empty space. You can fall. If you jump off of the train, you will float through space and you can move in full three dimensional space around your train. You are tethered to your train. So you only have a certain amount of movement before you hit the the, the tether limit. You will then, you can pull yourself back or you can just move the train. I actually had the train almost always automatically going forward just slowly. And I was just swimming in air around it, collecting materials to kind of build up my train with more crafting material stuff. The thing about it is that there is action to this, but it's pretty deep into it. You got to go pretty far into the crafting where you can actually build up your train. When I I played for like three hours 
and I still just had one little hours. square platform. The tricky part about the square platform is that you got to fit a lab in there, you got to fit a forge on there, you got to fit a crafting table on there, you got to fit a desk on there. So I had like a, I was very like I am cramped on this little platform. I really hope I get the opportunity to expand it soon. And I know for a fact again from the pre the the press footage, you do get the ability to fully build up a like a full train. And it has uh, online multiplayer so you can have your friends all tethered to the same train collecting materials building up shooting your guns at creatures in the void weird void snakes flying you know monsters void all left snakes and right. yeah you had me at void snakes the problem is that again it just you have to kind of put in the time and the effort for it to get there and initially it is a crafting survival game and that's what was for me the most confusing part i really really liked it but also, I was looking for, like, oh, man, this is going to be like Bioshock, but in the void on a train. That sounds sick as hell. And uh, that is not what I got. Yeah, that's kind of what they're evoking in the artwork, for sure. Uh, look, you watching the trailer? Because, yeah, that's what, that, the, that's what I got. Not just the trailer, the, uh, the title card with the, the character. It looks very Bioshock Infinite. And, Alec, what you have the, the footage running, don't you? I just cut out. <laughs> I can put it back. Put it back up again, Joel. Pull up Twitch. What, are you trying to do our viewership? Hold no, on. I just Twitch. want. I just. I, I more want to be able to see this because it just. It's. It's again. It's a. It's a quality, hardworking product that I found no problems with it. But it. What it is also just very confusing to me. What they were trying to, like what the what they were making, versus what they were selling, and that's where I was like, oh, that's weird. That's Does not what the I thought it was. Demo have multiplayer. I didn't really dig that far into it because I oh, also felt like where play. where I was was also a situation where the multiplayer would be me and Joel and Getty and you voiding around, like flying in the air, swimming through the air to collect wood and metal yeah. and then put it in a forge. Voiding around. Yep. It's, it's worth so, noting, this is a very nice looking game. It's got some cool style. I saw a revolver reload where was literally the pieces popped out. It looked like it was floating yeah. in midair. Like it, yeah. It's got style up the wazoo. But. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying is that I think that Void Train can be awesome. And I'm very excited. And in fact, I, I have since, like, when I realized this, I was like, that's a bummer. I don't know if I... Like, it's not what I wanted. You get, like, grappling hooks and stuff, but then, at you know, at the same time, then I'm also like, I should probably play some more Void Train. So I did find myself, like, going back a couple times being like, oh, no, I put some here. You know, yet eventually you start going to, like, you start pulling into train stations that are very weird planets full of creatures. So you can go on the oh, this fish, giant fish. There's a lot of stuff going on in this game. But I digress. For right now, what I got is a very heavy crafting game. And that's fine. It just was very surprising to me cool i mean sounds good to me all right i like to do the deep dives on games so i'd probably just get addicted to it holla man i'm in it get some of that space material find some space snakes oh man i'm so into some space snakes you know when you said that i get the feeling that it is the snake game so oh hmm. i know that's not, not but yeah all right all right all right what do you guys think you want to take a short breather here before we come back and dominate more of the early adopters yeah let's do a news break a whole news break hell yeah news break all right <laughs> Well, I guess we're going over to the news then. You guys even ready for the news? No. Time out. Okay. <laughs> oh, you actually need a time yes. out? Okay. <laughs> we're taking a break. Cut cut it here. <laughs> Hey news, I heard if you put in over 1,000 hours to League of Legends, you automatically win. 
Did you see that? You that guys know what I'm talking low. about? No, that, that's news to me. What's you that? said it's low? Hold on. I'll get some... I thought I took a screenshot of this. You know, I how will say, it, Getty, that there is a... There was I didn't put this in the news, but there was a man who uh, got to level 70 without uh, fighting anything in World of Warcraft. In, we all know about that. <clears throat> a, apparently there's a... They added, enough you know, gopher jo- quests. What? There's enough no. gopher quests. No, no. You can no, do exploration no, he, and you can... He did it without leaving. Leaving he what? He did it without... Uh, so they added a thing, Joel, this is for Joel. Um, <laughs> uh, they did, um, they added a thing. You know, they, you know, remember they had pets, little pets that just did nothing? Yeah. Yeah. They made it so they could fight. Yeah, they added Pokemon like 15 years ago. And Where have you been? Th- not no, I'm wild. telling them. I'm telling them. I know. I, I don't play WoW and I still pay attention. But they don't. So because of that, they also made it so you can get a little bit of experience. So a guy over the course of 200 hours sat in the the starting area and fought people with the, his pet. Did little this pet battles. This is your punishment. And, and uh, he made it to level 70 without leaving. That's the current cap. Wow. That's uh, dedication Painful. or insanity. Did they I reset, think a little bit of both. Did they reset the level cap at some point? Ye- yep. Multiple times. Yes. Oh, okay. I felt like it was bigger than that. It was. I think it, it was like 110 at one point. It was something yeah, stupid. Yeah, they smushed everything. And then they smushed it all down. Right. Numbers mean nothing. It's fine. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. So I feel every day. All That's right. That's job. Uh, anyway, we got... I worked in numbers. A lot yeah. of hard-hitting news this week. We've got upwards of two stories to cover. I thought there was Upwards three. of two. We have three. <laughs> we do have three of them. We have more freebies this week than we have news to talk about. All right. Uh, I didn't click this link, so I'm going to do that and jump to... Th- the second one, as that opens, Square Enix producers admit that a Final Fantasy Tactics remaster is coming. Where's it coming to? Good question. I, I do love the phrasing of this, admit, like it's some sa- a shameful secret they're letting out. And, it's, I mean, really it was yeah. just the producer saying that the remaster t- or the Final Fantasy Tactics team is busy. Mm-hmm. So it could be a new game. It could be a lot of different things. We don't know it's a remaster, but I'm the hoping. reason. The reason why, again, Alec, is that there was the Nvidia leak. Yep. With those you know, bunches of games, and the one, the the t- like the very few that are left, the Final Fantasy IX remake, and the Tactics remaster. I'm waiting for it, Alec. Don't tell me no. Oh man, I'm gonna play the shit out of it. I hope it. I hope it's a remaster. No, I can't snap a digital copy. Yep. Can't you? You could break your keyboard. <laughs> no, I will just will uninstall exist. it. I will uninstall and then reinstall. But are you gonna delete the game data? Undecided. <laughs> Favorite Rage part of that deletion. story, right before Alex breaks the Final Fantasy Tactics disc. Well, I guess this is happening. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, he, nobody gave him a choice. <laughs> oh, it hurts my heart. But whatever makes you happy, man. So will we get a Final Fantasy Tactics remaster in our lifetime? Sure sounds like it. Exciting. Will we get a Starfield in our near future? <laughs> Not so sure. Not so sure. This is big news for me, kind of upsetting, but Starfield release date is now showing June. What happened to Q1? This is bullshit. It's a fiscal Q. Yeah, it's, it's a, a fiscal Q. It's a Q, so it's, it's something all right. It sounds like they're giving me the runaround. I don't know about you guys. It's bogus. It's all bogus. Um, any Anybody want to throw anything else in uh, for... Starfield. I look forward yeah. to playing Soap Song before that. I look forward to hearing 
uh, my friends not shut up about it, despite me asking them repeatedly. Uh, are you going to ask about it and then be interested no. or what? No, they're just going to talk about it whether I ask them to or not. And then when I ask them to stop, they will continue to tell me They'll how it's the They'll find an God itemized list of bugs just to share with them and, and share a bunch of JT clips to you know, show them how janked all the Bethesda, yeah, Bethesda teams are. Mm-hmm. And they will then continue to tell me how it's the best thing ever. Yeah. Yeah. How many hours of Fallout 76 have they played? I don't I don't, I don't ask. <laughs> <laughs> none, of the, none of this matters. Do they really want to play that game? Well, well, we'll see. I think Starfield is a little bit, uh, a little bit more single player oriented, but yeah, I don't know anymore. Maybe they're just going to make it into a different game by the time it comes out. Hell, we might just have Fallout Two in 3D version, right? Ooh. Is that something in the works? Or no, wishful I'm, thinking. I don't, Fallout 2 was okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I never played as much of it as I played uh, the original Fallout, so that was fun. Okay, news article. I've had a chance to skim over this third article to see what it's all about. And it seems like, uh, just from glancing through it, um, somehow putting games on Game Pass eats into the sales that Microsoft sees for those games. It's the I weirdest mean, thing. From the no shit department. Well, I guess back in 2018, nah, don't don't quote me on this, but Phil Spencer said something differently. Uh, I get it. It's Game Pass is a, a wonderful thing. You're giving people access to games that uh, right out the gate that they might not try or that they, you know, really wanted. Uh, but it does, you know, make it so that people aren't going to spend that $60, that $80, however much games cost now, on a physical version of it, or even a digital version. If they have it on Game Pass, then they could just play it until they're happy, uninstall it, and move on. So, numbers, for sure, you'll get a, a lot of people showing, like, hey, look at how many copies of High on Life people played when it first came out. Do you think anybody wants to pay $60 for that game? If you could pay, or you could play for free. No, and I mean, I think part of it too that probably doesn't help is that if it were just constrained to Xbox, the console itself maybe wouldn't yeah. have such a widespread thing. But with it being PC Game Pass as well, it opens the dates to a lot larger base of people to play some of this stuff. Um, there was some articles back about how some of these early adopting devs who jumped on the game pass got pretty solid deals and, and got mm-hmm. paid pretty well for them and i imagine that at spots will still continue to do some sweetheart deals with some bigger name indies or, or developers but uh it doesn't surprise me that it is winnowing down i mean it reminds me a little bit of uh spotify in the way that it sort of tectonically shifted the music industry and how payouts went with that but oh yeah it's not even just uh stuff like this i wasn't it there were wait uh, correct me if i'm wrong but we talked about it in the past like some people like the information coming out on how much that they were offered in order to drop something on game pass and then people coming back like hey wait a second did we cover anything like that we 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 did cover it in the past it it, It was just like real quick though yeah but the, the idea was that like a lot of these devs the lump sum payout they got up front was would cover their development costs and maybe then some. So like mm-hmm. even if even if the sales front didn't light on fire, they would still at least be covering their expenses when they're making this stuff. So yeah, uh, it, it is just an interesting facet of the business, though. And you consider you continue seeing the shift to digital, and you sort of wonder where it all leads. Um, definitely down this hallway, but. You know, I don't know about you guys, but sometimes I'll try something on Game Pass and I'll be like, man, I really like this game. I just don't like it here. Yeah. And then I'll go to a different storefront and I'll purchase it there, knowing full well that if I really wanted to play Chained Echoes, then I could sit in front of my computer for however many hours. But do I want to sit on my couch and play it on my Steam Deck? Just a little bit more. Yeah, and I, I found that few 
to a few times with my switch you know just yep. you don't don't want to be sitting at the the computer i don't want to be monopolizing the tv <laughs> with games all the time uh so it, it is a nice sort of try before you buy kind of situation too it, it reminds me a little bit of uh back when demos were really big during like the at spots resitsty and ps3 era you know and it really depends on the quality of game whether or not it helps you because like infamous i wouldn't have bothered buying that game if i hadn't tried the demo of it oh yeah you know but there's a gamble too that was one of those games yeah. where weren't sure what you were going to get right now or, nowadays it's a little bit better you're like oh, i'm pretty sure i know what i'm going to get by this mm-hmm. like dead space yeah yeah <laughs> i know i know what i'm going to get i'm going to go buy it anyway but yeah interesting stuff something to think about absolutely is it going to stop me from having game pass no no <laughs> screw <laughs> them if they're going to let me play these games for free i'll give them the 15 bucks a month or whatever the hell it is it equalizes okay so now we got our freebies Freebies. 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 There's, okay. there's so many freebies here. So many freebies. Okay, Alex, you ready to do this? I am. You and me, freebie central. Free your mind. Free these games. We're going to Sky Island first. Sky Island over freebies. on Steam. Free these games. That's pretty funny. Uh, Sky Island is a student game that is actually on Steam, which is kind of cool. And it is a top-down, uh, almost Diablo-esque game. Uh, you're kind of a cute little chibi knight <clears throat> going through and fighting monsters and fixing your broken plane to return home safely after you've landed mm. on the Sky Island. It's really pretty. Okay. Also on Steam, we have Lilith. Lilith. Let me see if I can find this one. This one, I, I found it. It was there, and now I don't it see it. Was it was there? Mm, okay, move Did past Lilith, because for some reason I can't find it again. It disappeared, but if you find it, reach out to us via email and let us know that you found it. All right. Alien Breed Trilogy over on GOG. Good Old Games has the Alien Breed Trilogy, where you are... Uh, and it's a giveaway game. It is a third-person isometric shooter where you're going through and killing all of these different aliens as they are invading your space ship. Okay. Get that ship. Yep, save your ship. We got War Pigs on the Epic Game Store. No, we don't. We have War Pips. War Pips? Okay. War Pips. You see the red line under it? It's playing with my eyes. Yeah. So, uh, War Pips is, uh, let's see here, it's a kind of -of tug-of-war strategy game, deploying soldiers, tanks, helicopters, and planes, uh, in a strategy kind of focused war game. Researching technology and trying to improve your armies as you go. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Am I doing this next one? Uh, Nothing to do with me. I didn't put it on there. <laughs> Joel would like you to know that Leisure Suit Larry Retro Bundle Steam Keys are available over on... What is this? Fanatical. Fanatical. <laughs> Have at it. Next one. Uh, did you put these other... Yeah. All right. We have Octodad over on Itch.io. Do you want to explain that, Joel, or me? Just get Octodad. Experience it. It's We've great. talked about this Octodad a dozen times on here. You control I don't think the arms. This is the, I don't think this is the full game as much as this is like their initial pitch. Like their this is what the initial the initial game was. Well, Octodad uh, trying to do normal everyday tasks, pretending to be a father while uh, having real clunky, silly controls. And their original pitch they have released. It's a free, It was their student project. Uh, younghorses.itch.io itch.io slash octodad mm-hmm. and the last one we got Vorax Alpha or is this an Vorax, alpha build it's an alpha build of a game called okay. Vorax it is a 
do you remember those games all orcs must die it was kind of like tower defense but it was a third person shooter as well yeah now imagine that but it's but you're fighting hordes of demons okay and that is vorax and that one's over on indie gala yep well i took the time to find a screenshot from game pass with the statistics if you guys want to take a look Mm. at it how long to beat has league of legends in it 1068 hours (laughs) i think that's about one hour too shy (laughs) you got some free time now if you look at the mains and extras that'll put you in at 1500 in eight hours that's a lot of extras and I'm not even going to tell you what completionist is. So I'm going to let you think about that. We'll take a break and come back and finish our early adopters for the week. How's that sound? Sounds good. See you on the other Sounds side. Good. Alright, I guess we're we're doing stuff here. Who's ready to do more stuff? Sure. Alright. Steam yeah. the, the best Steam Fest next fest. The next rest. festiest fest in the next. It's my the turn west. now. In the West. I'm gonna tell west, you Getty. about Say the Fabledom. West. Fabledom. What do I say Getty, about Fabledom? Getty, what's Fabledom? It is a Civ kind of game. And I I really haven't gotten into these games since, uh, you know, Age of Empire back in the day. Uh, Strategy, uh, you build your civilization. This one kind of looked cute and uh, simplistic. There's not a lot of... You know, there's there could be points where it's like, oh man, this is a high stress. You're trying to make sure that everything is perfect. You build out your city. Uh, This is nice and relaxing and you can set the speed of the game to you can go regular speed or you can jack it up to like 3x but fabledom drops you into a world that is like a random seed that you select uh it'll give you you can randomize it as many times as you want pick the layout that you like and then just take a spot on the map you start building you build a couple of roads you start to build houses farms, just all types of structures and buildings with the purpose of trying to find love. It's a really cute story because it starts out with a storybook and it's telling, uh, oh, here's the tale of a, a prince or a princess who is looking for love. And then you take that and translate it into, okay, now I've got all of these people, all of these villagers, And now I can start sending letters and communicating with other kings, queens in the area and uh, find that that love, that romance that you're looking for in your fabledom. There's some interesting elements. You have to take into consideration the population as you get more people and the seasons will change. And on top of that, uh, certain structures, you don't want them too close to where your people live. So if you have a mine or a a lumber camp, you want to keep them as far away from the population, but you don't want it to be too far away because you still have to transport the supplies back and forth. So there's a lot of resource management uh, that plays a a part in this, this cute game. So it lets you go for quite a while. You only need to, you don't need to play for too long in the demo. But if you want to, you can just keep going at it. It does set a cap eventually, so you can't get any more uh, peasants to join your village. But it doesn't really stop you from, you know, still having fun with it. And there's more to the map. There's more areas that you can unlock as you go. But this just kind of limits you to this is what's available right now. And you need to get more people in order to build and have them to take care of your different buildings. Okay. Yep. So that's that's yeah, my fable them. Awesome. That sounds good. That sounds very interesting. 
there is a little bit of everything in this episode for everyone. So, whether you like chill strategy civilization building games, or you want some dungeon crawls, or you want some grim guardians. Alec, yeah, like you got this one? Yeah, I think I got this one. Okay. So, Grim Guardians Demon Purge. You, uh, It's a Metroidvania. You've got... Um, you play as two sisters. Shino... Shino sh- duh, duh, easy for me to it's say. It's okay. Sh- Shinobu and Maya. And they have very different play styles depending upon which one you're currently active as. And you can swap between them at any time. Uh, Shinobu is uses a anti demon SMG. <laughs> okay, <laughs> cool. And Maya uses uh, origami. She's got she's more of a melee character up close and personal. Um, seems to kill things easier. And Shinobu is ranged. Mm. But you've got your gen- general exploration, go through, get to the boss, kill the boss, and go on to the next area. There is a little bit of uh, backtracking that is available. However, I did not get to a point at which it was I unlocked anything that was useful in the demo to mm-hmm. need to go back. Okay. Aesthetically, you can definitely see it's it's wearing its influence on its sleeve from the Castlevania aspect. It's, oh, absolutely. It's a lot of very gothic-looking environments, uh, very oppressive, and, and uh, stuff inspired by religious iconography. So it, it definitely is cribbing off of that pretty clearly. Definitely. What's good? And How is actually- that moving around? I was uh, so it does not the my biggest complaint was that there's no dash at least yet. Mm-hmm. I'm willing to bet you unlock one. Mm-hmm. That has to be like an upgrade, right? That's a pretty yeah. stack upgrade. So I, it, moving around, it feels fluid. Um, actually, with uh, Shinobu, you cannot. You can shoot and jump, but you cannot. You have to stop shooting to jump. Oh, yeah? Yeah, so you cannot... If you're laying down fire, you cannot start jumping and moving while you're firing. Hmm. It hmm. really gives into uh, switching your characters and using that range to your advantage. Well, it, so you, like, you, uh, if you can switch the characters on the fly, it would be easier to like do a couple melee hits. If the boss is doing like an animation, you could just swap to your character move away and just shoot yes Hmm. okay but that still sounds like painful at times it is a little painful but it's one of the limitations of the character are there any uh, enemies that are like rushing up to you that you're you're like oh man i'm gonna gun this guy down and then you're like oh i'm dead (laughs) (laughs) no i didn't run into any of those okay there, there were definitely some slow-moving zombies that I had plenty of time to unload a clip. All right. So you recommend this one? You come back for it? Uh, oh, I'm coming back for it. It's, this is... Uh, it's up there now. All right. It's coming out? It came out? What did it coming come? out on the 28th. So just oh, my a, gosh. Like Hell a yeah. week and a half, two weeks. But the time the people are list. listening to this podcast, it'll be days away. I don't know. I don't know when we release anymore. Don't correct me either. Sundays. It's always Sundays. And people are listening to it on Mondays? Yeah, that sounds good. That sounds right. Sure, yeah. so. And we're back with the Backlog Blog, where Alex plays Slave Zero X. Y'all like them uh, Capcom games? Sometimes. Yeah. What kind <laughs> I said I, I wanted to hear Joel's reaction, and his ears perked up real quick. Um, so it's a two. It's a two D. Uh, here it is. I'm playing two D three D. You're, you're side scrolling. Do you remember? You remember the Punisher? That two D beat him up. Yeah, yeah. Vaguely. That was, okay, that was good. So here you don't get any depth in the in the. You don't move up and down the stage. They're pretty much straight like straight on one plane with you. Mm. 
but it's you can get some some sick combos, baby. You get three hit combo, kick him into the air, hit him five more times. You get these wild like slices. Your your sword slices are really like big and animated. You're like a Giver mech. So you're you're like in this weird flesh suit and you're going through and killing like evil people. And that seems to be like what evil people wear is other Giver flesh suits. Like mech mech flesh suits that look demonic. How but many um, times you get a, do you, you intend a... to say flesh suit? <laughs> I, I've, I've also been crumb is kind of a flesh suit. I don't know. I've also been using Giver a lot, which is kind of a deep pull. I no, no, like, I masses. get that. <laughs> like I, no, I don't you do, but I'm saying that. for the masses, I've used Giver like three episodes straight. Yeah, I don't think the people understand that reference. Oh well. All right, go see. So Giver. on top of that. You, Mark Hamill's uh, best movie. Figure that one Muck out. MacGyver? No, not Muck. No, no. That live action Giver movie was good though. It was sweet. All right. So back to Slave Zero X. You get these combos. If you can you can actually kick someone in the air, grab them mid-air and body slam them down. Just with a couple of quick movements, you can slide kick. You know, it's all about directional and sometimes input, you know, doing a fireball will do a different move. Dash attacks, upward dash attacks, downward dash attacks, mid-air. You get a lot of specials. You get uh, an ability to do more damage. You get grenades, and you get a block parry. Uh, the parry is really, it's really, like, flashy. He'll parry, and it won't say anything, but the whole screen will flash, so you get a really cool, like, visual tell. And the enemies, are the, you know, just a lot of side-scrolling enemies. And the other interesting thing about this that sets it apart is that as you're going on a 2D plane... The world around you is PS1, PS2, 3D. So your character will be going straight, but all of a sudden the whole world will shift and you'll just be going the like the like it'll be like, oh, you hooked a left. You didn't really hook a left. Your character went straight, but the, the screen shifted. Mm, so to make that. it look like your character hooked a left. Yeah. Yeah. And so the enemies will be really bad, like 3D demons that are, again, PS1 level graphics. So it's got a lot of throwback that's really fun and. Uh, I, I get, this was kind of a quick one for me just because I played it and I was like, well, feels good. Reminds me of Capcom games. I all, I found myself doing combos that like, oh, I didn't know if I double tap down and did attack, he would body slam somebody. But then also I found kicking him in the air. I could jump in the air and hit him like six more times and then throw a grenade at him. I, I just kept discovering new ways to do more combos and defeat enemies. And it just, it, that, that right there was like, okay, that's enough. I know that this is fun because I'm just flowing and I'm just learning new fluid combos so and and, and to the fact that i'm not somebody that necessarily like plays along with mechanic like i'm not a game teaches me a mechanic i say okay i'm going to use it this one i was actively like playing with it i was Mm -hmm. trying to figure out what the next combo was how i can adjust how i can move and get more hits in so if a game can make me do that when i normally don't i'm i am very happy and impressed and it is on my wish list all right we're nearly there. We're nearly there. Just got two more to make it through. Uh, my other one is actually really short. So, uh, Which was your other one? Mika. Mika and the Witch's Mountain? Uh, I always say, do y'all like, y'all like Kiki's Delivery Service? Who doesn't that's how this like one is. Kiki's Delivery Service? Joel doesn't. He just shrugged. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> what, what's, Joel, get what's out. TD's Delivery Service. Get out. No, just get out. Just get out. No, it's okay. Uh, it was it was one of the early uh, Studio Ghibli movies. Mm-hmm. Okay. About a witch who flies on a broom and is trying to figure out how to be an official witch. So she goes to a new town and just delivers packages for nice families to raise money to become a real witch. Okay. And... Mika and the Witch Mountain is exa- is pretty much exactly that. Your character, uh, she is told to become a real witch. She has to jump off this mountain with her broom, and she instantly just cu- falls straight down. And when she wakes up, she's in a small town, and her broom is broken. And the only way to fix it, to make her way up back up to Witch's Mountain, is to go and help the, the local town uh. by doing deliveries. Okay. And you fly around and you do deliveries. You have little boosts, and the better you do, the more money you get. And then you your character your character levels up and can fly higher, faster, and do other neat little things in the environment. But mostly, it's just interacting with these cutesy characters and performing tasks for them in a nice, wholesome way. The minute the the demo was like fifteen to thirty minutes, 
so I really got a taste of one delivery, but from what I saw, it was pleasant. Okay. It was really pleasant. Sounds good. Sounds nice and mellow, too. Uh, Mika and the Witch's Mountain. Absolutely, Getty. All right. You know what sounds unmellow? The God of Rock. So who played God of Rock? That'd be me. All right. So Joel, uh, take it away. I will probably also be a little brisk on this. God of Rock uh, is definitely the same style of game as something like Theatrhythm, Final Fantasy, uh, which we played last week. Yep. Okay. Time, time means nothing anymore. <laughs> um, so it, it is a similar style of game. You got the notes on the bar line. You have to hit the corresponding button as it flows through. It is, as it's noted, a very rock style game. The interesting hook about this is that it is set up like a premise of a fighting game. So it will actually, you'll choose a character that have their own different move sets for their special moves. Uh, so while you're playing these different lines on uh, notes on the line, you can actually do like a, a down forward attack button and it'll do a special attack, stuff like that. And it, it actually works pretty well in terms of it feels very analogous to a fighter. You got your HP at the top. When you're trying to do your combos, you can't just sort of throw it in raw <laughs> and expect to connect because they're going to defend it. Uh, and then if you, you have to sort of chain it into a combo with the individual notes first. And the other part of it, too, that's pretty cool is that all the characters are very dynamic and crazy-looking, distinct, like a good fighter is... Uh, the only problem is that, like the rhythm, you can't pay attention to what's on the screen behind it. Mm-hmm. You know, yep. and and, uh. and that's that's the one sticking point that I have not been able to get, to get over yet for these kind of games because you're missing out on a lot of cool stuff happening in the background. It's all really celestial looking. Uh, the characters have these crazy looking combos. It's very cool stuff. Um, that and I would say the basic difficulty is really hard, like really yeah. hard, way too fast uh, for me. Uh, so be warned that uh, unless you are a pro uh, Friday Night Funkin player, you, you might need to start on easy mode. All right. I like that you made that pull. I want to go back to the part where Joel said, throw it in raw. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, I was actually, I was, I was waiting for him to finish to the say, are we going to really let that one fly? Time, I was just like, throw it in raw. Well, I, I mean, we raw, just we raw dogging it, it up raw. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, haven't heard that one Joel before. Joel's raw dogging combos here. <laughs> oh, willy Joel, nilly. <laughs> take it a step back, man. All right. Okay. Right. Just chill out on the rod. So, it, 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 was there another difficulty setting that you could have attempted? In yeah, the, yeah. Okay. It, it was more the harder. It one? was more manageable. Um, that just it just okay. hurts your pride a little bit when you gotta go to easy. <laughs> Tet <laughs> Tetris. Uh, what was that Tetris game that we ended up playing? Tetris Worlds or whatever. Mm. Yeah, that one. Where I was like, I'm not losing to this game on easy or on normal. I'm gonna finish it on normal. <laughs> And I think I lost Tetris a year effect. off of my life by doing Tetris it. Tetris effect? So stressful. That one stressed the shit out of me, too. <clears throat> okay, so we're good on early adopters? I, I think so. And we made it through? That's, that's yes. average episode length. I think that we're going to be just fine, guys. All right, I'm just going to scroll through the 15 pages of backlog games. <laughs> <clears throat> Okay. All right. Finish scrolling through all that. All right. We're going to a final final segment of the night. One last thing, and this week's one last thing is brought to you by more homework that's due next week. And which homework is that? Um, it's heroes, Alec. right? It's heroes. Heroes of Might and Magic Three. Yep. Not PC Building Simulator. Which I be, bought that for fun. It wasn't meant as homework. It, it is was just a fun game for you guys to enjoy. Homework, on your own time. and you have to play it. It was. It was a. It was literally a gift. It was a. It gift. was a gift for. And we had to play the other gifts and report <laughs> back on them earlier this year. What do you think it that this is? Gift. Charity work. It was a gift for you. You think guys I'm to doing enjoy. this for free? 
<laughs> in your own time. Wait, you're getting paid? Aren't you? No. Definitely not. I'm pretty sure I'm paying <laughs> for this. Yeah. Yep. There's money coming out of our pocket somewhere. With your oh, dignity. Oh. Yeah, I was going to say more than money. <laughs> it's way more than money. All right. Uh, my one last thing will be, I don't know, man. I think I'm halfway done with Fire Emblem, and I don't know what the hell's going on. It just gets more and more ridiculous. I realize that the characters look more like... You guys remember the Legend of Dragoon game? Yeah. Yes. When your characters would morph, that's that's what the characters look like when they engage. Hmm. So when they do their engage moves, and then the abilities that they get, just they're, they're dumber and dumber. I unlocked... Nice. Uh, uh, what the last two heroes? So Corin and uh, Byleth, whatever it is from from Fire Emblem Three Houses, and now I have those characters. And one of them shoots just a, a laser beam that takes up three nice. squares. Why? I don't so, know. So does it even feel like a Fire Emblem game anymore with that kind of addition? I don't know. It's Fire Emblem, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Am I really confused about what's going on? Yeah. Yeah, I'm real confused. And then they just... That's real funny. And then... Oh, uh, yeah. Well, we'll talk about it more later. All right, Alex, what do you got? <laughs> I finished the video game homework early. I'm very excited. I'm very happy about that. Oh. And I did it in possibly the dumbest way possible. You know what that means. You can take some of these Trello reviews. <laughs> I, well, I already have one. Uh, I was going to say that means hard space ship breakers. Let's go. You got to fist the yeah. air. Are you fisting? Void train. Void train. Fist, Alex. Void, fist. <laughs> Void train. You can't just throw it in raw. <laughs> Joel will never live that down. <laughs> Thank you for that golden yeah. nugget. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> it was a good descriptor. I got what you were saying. Yeah, you have to be all did. methodical and I, uh, I, I will, careful. In I will movements. make sure to be more purposeful with my language choices moving forward. <laughs> Please don't. No, yeah. Please is, don't, Joel. This makes for good television, because that's what this is, right? It's television? Yep. Nope. It's Audio format. Meeting. The fuck is that? Joel, what do you got? <laughs> uh, you got him on that one. Well, this is a tonal shift, but uh, I finished uh, A Space for the Unbound. And, I'm so uh, sorry. Nice. That is that's early game of the year contender. Really, really great experience. I am. You beat me on that one. So you sorry. started after me and finished it before me. Yep, it it captured me for a bit. It didn't take long to mm. sink its teeth, and so it's excellent. Uh, on the scale of most of the feels to all the feels, how did that ending hit you? All the feels. Yep. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I just needed somebody else to confirm. Yeah. Uh, Alec, you're our last one. You know what's a really good game? Metroid Prime. (laughs) (laughs) I've definitely been playing that, and I'm going to play more of it. Enjoy yourself. What happened to Spider-Man? Yeah, Spider-Man, I have to sit in my computer chair, which I've been sitting at for eight hours a day after Mm -hmm. work. I don't really want to sit in it anymore. Rather That's sit right. on the couch. <laughs> yep. See? Need that Steam Deck. Need that Steam, I need deck. that Steam Deck. It's real good in Spider Man. Spider Man's real good on it. Yeah. We're good then? Everybody's happy with this episode so far? Is there any way we can ruin it? There's not much left. I mean, we could throw it in raw. <laughs> <laughs> Take that, you fucker, Joel. <laughs> what? <laughs> Why did you say- why did you say that? <laughs> you, you know, it, it's honestly being hostile about it makes it less bothersome. To me. Really? Yeah, there we go. All right. Uh, Getty, don't act like you haven't been hostile all episode. I came what? to make a podcast, and you wanted to throw hands. <clears throat> all right. I'm like a dog. Let's go. <laughs> Uh, that'll be it for this week's episode of Super GG Radio. Before we go, you can find us on Twitter at Super GG Radio and twitch.tv slash Super GG Radio, where uh, we got stuff. I actually saw that Joel might have been doing 
non-vampire survivor stuff this last week. Yeah, so Kelly was, uh, t- her taint was on empty from English teaching, so she's like, do, <laughs> do whatever, and uh, Overwatch was right there, so Overwatch it was. All right, so... Disney Dreamlight Valley. It, it's downloaded, <laughs> it's just a matter of when, <laughs> you know? Okay. I'm okay. intrigued by that, you'll have to report back. I don't know if I'd like it, but it it seems like Stardew, so maybe? It definitely has shades of that. I'm curious. Okay. About it. Yeah. All right, but let's. Uh, I digress. Uh, that will be. Uh, what are you doing that now? You thinking just whenever? Random podcasts or random streams? I mean, Wednesdays and Saturdays are our days. We are going to probably be trending back towards Escape Academy here soon. Yes. Uh, just because that's been overdue and and want to give Vampire Survivors space to breathe until the next content drop. So. Um, Someday I will get back to Disco Elysium. Uh, that, mm-hmm. that is, that's a mountain to climb, so I need to prepare myself a bit. But yeah. Okay. Thursdays we got regular podcast stuff. That's right now. Yep. Uh, Sundays, Alex is not doing anything. We lost him. <laughs> he just oh, no. disappeared. <laughs> Uh, sometimes he's, uh, playing games. Backlogs no. and states. And yeah, he's got some backlogs. He's got some Skater X on I got halfway, I got halfway through the, 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 the Android saga. Oh yeah, you're almost done there. With the Android saga, yeah. Yep. And then you still got Boo Saga I want to say that? also... Real quick, I just also want to say that they really they added another mechanic all of a sudden. They added two more mechanics. Oh, good. Like They added a thing where I could build machines so I could traverse the world, which I do a whole lot. I don't. Like, you can have a car. They had a whole episode where I was driving a car, where I was, Goku and Piccolo were learning to get their driver's license. Yeah, you don't remember that? That was an episode. Ball Z? I, I've only watched anything after the Frieza saga once. Uh, yeah, that was a whole episode. It was great. Yeah, well, I played that episode in the game, and then also, I also got a mechanic where now they just made me have the the gravity room, so I could train my characters. I guess, but I'm still roughly two thirds through that game, so I don't know why they introduced that now. Just for you. <clears throat> and then, uh, yeah, yeah, that's that's what we got for podcast stuff, right? Yeah. Okay. This really came off the the rails at the end. Sorry, I'm just really taken aback by some of the stuff that we said this episode. But if you'd like to reach us with questions or input, our email address is mail at superggradio.com and provide us a review on iTunes or the podcast app of your choice. Thanks for listening. Good game, Alex. Good game, Getty. Also, I wanted to shout out uh, Good Game Todd C. Good game, Joel. You know who you are, Todd. GG Alec. Good game. All right. Good night, everybody.